The Erie Zoo is a great place to spend the day or just a few hours. 15 acres has over 400 animals, botanical gardens, and a fantastic children's area. Join me today as we discover what's new at the zoo. Right now we're in the Lorikeet Garden and I have uh, Emily Antolik joining us. And Emily, what is your position with the zoo? Um, I coordinate all the PR and events here for the Erie Zoo. Okay, and you've been, how long have you been here on board? Um, just a little less than three years. I know, Emily has always been one of the ones who was in the background when we were doing the station shows and she'd be bringing the animals yeah. up to me. So. Yeah, she was the culprit with some of the snakes <laughs> and the cockroaches. Yes, I love all the animals here, so. But anyhow, right now we're in the Lorikeet Garden. Tell me a little bit about this exhibit because it's very colorful. Yes. And hopefully we'll have maybe one of our friends joining us. Hopefully, yeah. This is one of our interactive exhibits here at the Erie Zoo. So there's two sets of doors that you walk through and you can walk through the little alley that we're standing in right now and the birds will just come up to you. Um, they're being a little camera shy right now, but hopefully, you know, they'll warm up to us a little bit and they'll come down and, you know, they walk all over you. They especially like earrings. So, uh, yeah, they're very friendly. Uh, well, maybe I'll get somebody to Yeah. <laughs> There's a sign out there which I thought was interesting that they will come and they will like feed right out of your hand. Tell me about that. Uh, at certain times there would be nectar um, because they have these little like hair like straws on their tongue and they suck up the nectar that way, but only certain times. Okay. Yes. And is this, uh, is this exhibit open all day when the zoo is open? Yes, um, weather and attendance permitting, there was somebody that sits in here all day just to make sure nothing goes on, none of the birds get hurt, just things like that. So um, if it's gonna storm, we'll just keep it shut just so nobody has to stay inside here. Right. And you have to be careful because like you said, you come in the two doors, you have to close one set of doors. Yes. And before you open the second, yeah, you, have, you don't want anybody escaping. Because they can all fly. They all have that ability. Well, so they'll just, they do. They'll just take off. Did so you we, ever have a mishap like that? No, no. We've been extra careful ever since, you know, Well, every, you ever since very, they've belonged here. But so. you know, you're very careful here and you're very good with everything. And I want to bring this up to, um, and we should be very proud here in Erie that our Erie Zoo is accredited. Yes. And exactly what does that mean to our viewers? So there is a council called AZA and every zoo in America and in Canada, uh, they go through a trial um, and they, they inspect your whole entire zoo. And so they make notes on everything, things that you need to change, um, need to make better. And that happens every five years. So every zoo goes through that every five years just to make sure everything is good for the animals and the staff as well. And I want to point out that not every zoo is accredited, are they? Exactly. You have to look for the AZA sticker or stamp that's on the main gate or on um, your membership card, and that will tell you if the zoo is accredited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are quite noisy little guys, aren't they? Yep, they're, they're getting active right now. I see that. And it's hard to really tell them apart. Um, can you tell them apart? Some of them I can. And they come in two different color schemes, the red and then the green. Okay, that's the one that's behind us. What's the difference? Just the color? Just the color of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is located, uh, in case you're at the zoo and you're saying, okay, I want to come and see these birds and I want them to crawl all over me and feed them. Oh, hopefully Emily can get them to come and join us. <laughs> it's located right next to the merry-go-round. I yes. can't wait to see what else you have in store for us. We have Emily. lots today. Okay, thank you. Well, we're here now, Emily and I are here now in the kangaroo exhibit. Yes. And the wallabies. Kangaroo and wallabies, correct. Uh, okay. Now we've got some kangaroos back here. They were a little bit active, but now they're just laying in the sand. Yeah, you can see them digging in the sand and it's nice and cool in there. So they'll try to get as deep as possible. Okay, yeah. how many kangaroo do we have here? Um, well, we have three out right now and there's four wallaby out in the yard with us currently. Okay. And two of them are babies that were born here at the zoo. Oh, how long ago? Um, you know, it takes a long time for, for us to see a baby wallaby because they're marsupials. So the baby is born underdeveloped and it crawls into the mom's pouch and it develops the rest in the pouch. So they're about the size of a tic-tac, 
when they crawl up to the mom's pouch. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh, how interesting. So, it's, so you don't we know don't, until all of a sudden they no, pop out No, we there. don't see them until we start to see movement in okay. the pouch. Okay. Yes. Yes. And um, this area you'll just walk through. Now, yep. when I'm walking through, any kangaroos going to jump out at me or anything um, like that? They were not going to jump out at you, but you, they can easily hop over this rope. Yeah. They'll just hop right over. They do what they want. They know that this is their home, so they're always active and moving around. And um, sometimes they will stop like right here on the little brick walkway, and people will just get to look at them. And they're used to to people. Yes, being ever since them. they were born, they've been around people. So this doesn't phase them. You know, we we don't suggest anyone try to pet or you know go after them just because that makes them feel uncomfortable. But as long as you're just looking and enjoying, they are completely fine. Okay, so if if one's standing there, they're not real comfortable. If I would try and pet it or anything. No, like that. no, we do have one. Um, she's the most friendly, but she's she's still skittish. Yeah, yeah so she she lets you know if she's gonna pet if you're gonna let her pet her mm -hmm. okay now where is this located where's it in the zoo yep, we're it? in the children's zoo so it's actually right next to the lorikeet it's all the australian area so um mm -hmm. you know these animals would be found australia new zealand so your children's zoo is just wonderful when um families come down here to the zoo if they go to the children's area what can they expect lots of interaction and not even just animals we have the lily pad garden that you can hop through there's a little jingle um stomp thing that you can stomp with your feet that plays songs that's my favorite <laughs> there's you know all types of sprayers and misters and there's um, a play area and a um, an area where you can dig stones. So lots of things that aren't animal related. Um, but then there's also all the other animals like llamas, the zebus, and then the snake is inside and turtles are inside the adventure center. So there's a lot to see down here at the children's zoo and it's all children's height. So, you know, it's really easy for all the kids to enjoy at all ages. There's a children's, what did you say, an adventure center? Yes, so the adventure center is all inside. So if you're at the zoo on a rainy day, that's the perfect place to go because there's animals inside, but there's also um, a play area. You can pretend that you're a veterinarian. We have a little train set up in there, some animals that you can play with. So lots of stuff to do inside on a rainy day as well. Okay, and what interaction with the animals can the children experience? Well, just walking through here, walking, you know, w into the lorikeet. We don't have any type of petting zoo anymore. It's just um, a lot of zoos are straying away from that just because, you know, kids are a little bit pushy with animals. They might get so, away. Yeah, yeah. Right. so just they're actually, the safe they're side. really straying away from any type of like petting zoo. Okay. So um, we don't have one of those anymore. Okay. Now, Emily, what are your hours? Uh, first off, what months are you open that, that the, our viewers can come down and, and enjoy? Yes, the we close the last day of November and okay. then reopen um, either how, depends how the week falls. We try to um, like the first of March or this year was a leap year, so it was a little bit earlier in February. Okay. Yeah. And your hours, what hours? Um, we're open enjoy uh, 10 to 5 and then in the summer months after Memorial Day, um, so after Memorial Day, it's op on Sundays, it's just open from 10 to 6. Okay. Yeah, just that extra hour on Sundays, but after Memorial Day. Which is nice because yes. the weekends, you know, can just relax a little bit and say, oh, it's a nice, cooler later evening. Let's yes. go enjoy the zoo. Yes. Yeah, so I can't wait. We still have more coming. Yes. <laughs>
such a family setting. You know, we have mom, dad, and baby. Um, we actually ha used to have a daughter. Her name was Leela. She lives in the Toledo Zoo now, and she has a boyfriend over there. Does so, she? Yes. Their little family will continue oh, to grow. Oh, how quick they grow, <laughs> and they're gone before you know it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, um, now, what do they usually eat? I see they're eating greens right now. Yeah, they Is eat all fruits and, fruits fruits and vegetables, and they like all different kinds. Um, it's amazing. They'll eat an orange, and they will eat almost everything but the peel. They can almost get the peel completely see-through. They get all those little white strings. Do they really? Yes. And for a special treat, they get animal crackers, trail mix, and you know, you'll see them searching through their exhibit, and they just put it in different places. Um, just to just to get them foraging, um, we call it an enrichment to bring out their natural instincts. Okay. Now, um, in the do you have an inside exhibit? I know you're closed in the winter. Yes. And so you bring them, you house them in there. Yeah, they can go inside and outside whenever they'd like. Um, in the winter, they can't come outside because the snow is too the chilly snow is too for cold them. for them. Yes. yes. So if I go inside, I'll still be able to see them if they happen to be. Inside, yes, and um, the With inside the glass exhibit cage. has um, different heated floors, so it can be warmer up front, a little colder in the back, and they can pick where they want to sit during the day. They're spoiled, as they you can see. This is why we are accredited, <laughs> yes, because they're spoiled, yes. So, and uh, I hadn't seen mom for for a while. She does she usually hide a little bit. More so, um, well, more since so they're eating right now, they're staying away from Joe because he likes to snatch a piece of their lettuce. Oh. She wants to eat as much as she can before he can take over because he is the dominant male here. Isn't that funny? Yes. <laughs> their personality. Yeah, and you know, you can see the, um, sometimes they'll be chewing gum and Joe is really good at chew, uh, blowing bubbles. Mm -hmm. And this is because um, if they are doing a training, bubble gum is a great treat for them. It gets them really motivated and, you know, we train them in, to learn different behaviors like um, a blood pressure sock. So they'll put their arm into a blood pressure tube and we can actually take their blood pressure without having to put the animal under anesthesia or any stress. So we practice all the time doing those type of behaviors with them. Okay, and what, like you said, a blood pressure sock. Why do you do that? Is it just, do you just maintain and keep, just keep the animal yep. healthy? Um, you know, primates, um, these are great apes, so they have cardiac problems just like a human does. So as much as we can do without having to put them under um, and less stress, but we can also keep a track of their health. She is really keeping an eye on you. Yeah, she, she definitely is. She's very ladylike. She likes dresses and long hair. Women that have painted nails, she loves to look at painted nails. No, yes. does she really? Yes, Dasa, um, when we give them chalk to draw with inside, she puts it on her lips, like a lipstick. Mm -hmm. She's very ladylike. Okay, now, speaking about chalk to draw with, tell me about the animal art show that you have. Yes, so we have two art shows, one by Christmas and one by Easter. Um, and this is just when the zoo is really crowded. So um, it's all on the stage and the keepers work year round to get all this beautiful art and almost every animal here at the zoo paints, so. Okay, what do you do? Just give them a paintbrush and, and paper and well, canvas and let the, them go? <laughs> the orangutans actually use brushes and paper, so they are the most human-like when they're painting. They amazing? dip the brush, they, they draw mm -hmm. circles, whatever they need to do. Other animals, it's a little more difficult. The rhino, we spread the paint on their skin and then actually stamp the paper. Okay, what do you do with some of the other animals? Um, we just put it on their feet and they just run across the paper. Like chickens will just dip their little feet in paint and they just run right across. The otters do it, they slide across the paper so they get really cool markings on there. And all the paint is non-toxic, completely approved by our veterinarian, so there's no health issues in there. And and when can we see this artwork? Um, there will be one. You can check out your your zoo newsletter. That will give you the official date of the, the two art mm -hmm. shows. But one will be um, around Christmas time, like in November. Okay. And then there's one by Easter. And Easter's always different every year. So. Okay. All right. You mentioned the zoo newsletter. Yes. How do I get on a mailing list? Um, you have to be a zoo member. Okay. Um, and we send them out three times a year. Let's talk a little bit about memberships. Is it just one membership, one fits all, or do you have different stages or different ways I can get a membership? We have different stages. There's a family, a family plus, a grandparent, a single parent, and a grandparents plus. And that plus just means you get 10 extra tickets, so you can take anybody that you want, and that's only 10 extra dollars. Oh, really? Yeah, so all the, members, the memberships are $65, but if you get the plus, 
you get those 10 extra tickets for $10, which is the best deal because, you know, that's a And so I can use those 10 extra tickets by bringing in 10 different guests throughout the yeah, throughout whenever the season. Yeah, whenever you want, but just here at the Erie Zoo. Mm -hmm. But when you have a zoo membership, you can go to zoos all across the country um, and you either get 50 percent off or 100 percent off their admission that is the yes. perk tell me all right we're in erie what are some of the zoos around here that i'd be able to get a discount with my zoo um, membership? you get buffalo cleveland pittsburgh those are all 50 percent off. they're all great zoos yes. too yes very nice um mm -hmm. and you know you can go really any zoo that's accredited you get 50 percent off or 100. that is yes. really really nice so you all right you have to get a zoo membership now can they uh just call and maybe order one over the phone yeah you can call over the phone what you number would they call 864-4091 okay um you can stop in the main office and we're open monday the main zoo office is open monday mm -hmm. through friday 10 a.m to 5 p.m you can do it online, and we also send out um, a reminder. Okay. So if you've ever had a membership in the past three years, mm -hmm. we send you a reminder. Okay. Yes. Well, this has been fun. Okay, they're off and running. They're off, They're yes. gone. <laughs> Crazy kids. She's still kids. looking at, at us, and she can't see her in the camera, but she's still keeping an eye on us. <laughs> well, let's go, viewers. We still have a lot more to see. Emily, we're inside now. Yes. All right. Tell me what do we have going on here. Yes. So we're inside the main building, and behind us are the lions. And previously, the lions used to live up in the moated exhibits, but about three right. years ago, they moved down here. Um, and our next, you can see as it's all decorated behind us. Yes. Because um, we need your help. Yes. Right. Because we need to raise money to be able to get them outside. The exhibit that they're in used to house a gorilla, and the gorilla could go outside, both in and out. Okay. But as you can imagine, it's a little bit different to cat-proof or lion-proof an outside exhibit. So there needs to be some changes that keeps everybody safe. Okay. So. Like, okay, are you talking like special fencing? It's going glass. to be almost, it's going to be a, a, a panel of glass, glass, and then it will all be netted. So it will be very open feel. You can get nose to nose with the lions. And we're looking around like a $700,000 bill for that. So uh, we're applying for different grants and we've had a couple different private donors um, donate money. So we're well on our way, but we, you know, we still need to get a little bit more. So we have different campaigns going on, um, especially at the zoo. If you purchase anything at a gift shop, concession stand, you can round your change up to the nearest dollar and all that roundup money goes towards this exhibit. Okay, and how else? How else can we donate? Um, Erie Gives Day, right. um, which is in August. Um, a lot of people will give money to, for then. Um, you can make a personal donation at any time, and we have different boxes and envelopes around the zoo for you to do that. And just, you know, getting a membership helps us. We, most of our revenue comes from memberships. Okay, uh, how many lines do we have? We have two lions. It's our, their mother-daughter pair, Nala and Jayla. Okay, they're beautiful. They, yes. They really are. People don't realize how huge a lion is until they can get nose to nose like this. All right, inside, there, it's enclosed. Yes. What is the temperature in there? What do you keep that at? Just right around what we're standing in. So it's very hot for it's them human. It's com this is what but this is what they like okay. yes yes so they but you know they're also used to the snow as well so they can go outside in the snow as long as it's not below freezing they love to go outside as Do well they? they've really have adapted to the eerie weather here okay. yes and they're they're cuddling yes. as we all have yes we all we have adapted <laughs> yeah the eerie weather um this is great i mean really this is so up close and personal yes Yes, you know, so people really to love see to, see them. to see them. Outside. Yeah, and they want to go outside as well. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about, while we're here, the train. The train. The train has been a part of the zoo since yes. I, I can't even tell you how long. You know, a trip to the zoo is not really complete without a train or carousel ride. So uh, the train is very popular. The lines get very long during the day. So, um, and you know, the conductor really makes the experience as well. They talk you through the whole train ride, they give you fun facts, they point out things that you can see out in Safari Land, so. And now, yeah. if I go on, on the train ride, what are some of the sites that I'm going to see? Um, we have, the zoo has uh, mouflon sheep out in Safari Land, but then right. there's also wild ducks and geese that go out there. There's painted turtles, 
different type of wildlife that would just be naturally found out there as well. There's deer. I remember seeing. Yeah, just move on sheep right now. Yes. Oh, but um, I because I've been believe me, I've been on this train many times. Yeah. <laughs> with my granddaughters, and. When you go out, every time you go out, you see something different, though. Exactly. They're all in different spots, mm -hmm. and you can see the animals from a different angle when you're going around, you know, past children's zoo. So, so hopefully we can get jump on the train. Yes, we, we will get you on the train. Okay, yes. we can see some of those sights because it is exactly. always fun. Emily, thank you so much. This is, this is really, really interesting. Thank you for spending your day here at the zoo. Now, uh, Emily, this is a newer exhibit, isn't it? Yes, correct. This opened last year around April, so yeah. And who is hanging around in here? We have the Canadian lynx and the leopards. Okay. Yes. And this is gorgeous. This really, really is. Now, they're not out visiting us right now, but I'm sure. It's a I'm little hot sure. for them. Yeah, they are hanging back towards their, air, their AC bedrooms, which <laughs> who wouldn't want to be in the AC today? But yeah. Um, you know, the armor leopard is on this side and they are very endangered species. So Tell me about that. There's very few left in okay. the wild. So the, a breeding program is very important for these animals. Right now we have a male and a female. It takes them a while to get used to each other. We, it's a slow introduction process. So we are working towards- Are they still dating? They're, just, they're, they're still, still dating, dating right now, yes. Okay. So it's a slow introduction process <laughs> um, and we hope that they'll be able to have cubs one day okay. for us and that would be awesome. Um, not even just for the Erie Zoo, but for the, the species in general, because there are so few left in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Canadian and lynx on the other side, they are a breeding pair. We have two cubs right now from them. Uh, we call them kittens, but they have two kittens uh, and they're over a year old now. Well, getting to be almost a year, but they're so big. They grow so fast. They look like just like mom and dad. So, um, and we're hopeful that they'll be able to have another set of cubs as well. I remember well. when they were babies. Yes. I mean, just born. Yes. And didn't you have a camera that we were able to only view them from we, a camera yeah. because you of course couldn't come and um, see the babies. We have a cubbing cubs. camera just so, so the public can see how right. cute they are and um, but also keep the mom stress-free because with all those little eyes looking at her babies that would be very stressful for them so we keep it as stressless as possible. Now you have a cub camera yes. and all right what other animals do you use that camera for? Uh, um, when they're you know when they're born. Yeah we can, we can use it for the red them. pandas um, any of the kit, any of the cats, so mm -hmm. the caracal, the serval, the tiger. Um, the lions are too old to have babies, so they won't have babies, and they're both girls. But any animal um, that that needs to have a closed off space, we can use that. Just needs some privacy. Yeah, and with, it's that's... night vision, so it can be dark in the room, and we can still see them. But I, yes. You know what, that really is cool, because I... It's brand new last year. And I can't year. remember. I mean, it must have been, then if it's a new We've had one before and it was a lower quality, okay. but this one was donated to I may us not and have it seen is the fantastic. Yeah. In light or dark, you can see them, it's, it's great. It, yeah. Well, that is, that is cool because you can actually see them, uh, keep an eye on them and see what they're doing. And they're so small because by the time they come out, usually they're so big, so everyone misses that baby phase, mm -hmm. yeah. How long did it take to get all of this in order and um, the greenery? Oh, it took a very long time. Did it? it yes, was a because if long you can imagine, the moats used to be here. So the first process that we did was, was fill in those moats. That. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, horticulture staff they pick all the plants that Do are they? inside. So we don't don't throw plants in there. They're all thought out. Um, you know, some of them have different smells that the cats like to roll around in. Um, the, the trees are so they can use their natural instincts to climb and, you know, file their nails down. So everything inside is there for a purpose. And even the stream inside of there, um, they can use that as enrichment and put feeder fish in there and they can actually catch their fish. Look <laughs> at this. They think of everything yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, as we're visiting uh, the different exhibits here, this really is just just the tip of the iceberg. Oh. When you come to the zoo, what, just again, tell me some of the animals, some of what we can experience. You can see rhinos and giraffes. We have spider monkeys, we have a jaguar. Inside children's zoo, we have llamas, alpacas, zebus. Um, we saw the kangaroos and the lorikeets. Um, but yeah, there's just so many to choose from. and. You know, we're always trying to change because we all are, we are a smaller zoo, but we got to keep changing so people 
you know, know that we just really appreciate everything that we have. You know, she says it's a smaller zoo, but honestly, when you're here, it's so easy to just spend the whole day here. Because not only that, you also have food vendors here too. Yeah, we have different food. snacks that you can get. Um, and then we have healthy options like chicken wraps and things like that. We have veggie burgers, stuff for really everybody. That made my daughter very <laughs> happy when yes. you went into the healthier, yes. healthier mode. I remember when you did that a few years ago and I think it's been a big hit. It, it really has. Um, you know, there's gogurts and grapes that the kids can choose from, not just chips and popcorn, which who doesn't love that? But you know, if you come to the zoo, a lot of moms and dads bring their kids, you know, twice a week to the zoo. So if you've got a yeah. membership, I'll, I'm honestly, uh, you're going to use it more than you even imagine yeah. possible. And we like to call it, it's like the perfect size for grandparents as well. It's not overwhelming. It's not too huge. Mm -hmm. Everybody can manage the size mm -hmm. when walking around here. And there's plenty of benches and shaded area. If you do get a little tired, you can definitely rest. And you can get something to drink. I mean, there's different yeah. throughout the park. There's either vending machines or someplace you can Correct. get some water or just something to cool down. Yeah. You have a gift shop here too, don't you? We do have a gift shop. You know, a lot of parents, <laughs> if, like you said, if you come to the zoo a lot, you spend a lot of time in the gift shop. So, you know, there's this stuffed I've left animals. sizable donations for the zoo <laughs> in their gift shop, let me tell you. Yeah, stuffed animals, t-shirts, pencils, so many different things in there. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just fun to look around. Well, I think it's so cute when you've got, the, got your children with you and you've visited the exhibits and all the animals yeah then you go in there and they've got all the little mini ones yes so they want them all they want them all they want them all and we want them to have them all yes so. you do but it yeah i'm going to tell you something emily you guys have done a fantastic job thank you i love coming here with my family they love coming here uh, i know my daughter and her family are members every year they're members because they like to contribute yes. and they want to keep you got helping you guys build and uh and you do. Every year I come here, there's something new. Yeah. That's what that's what our goal is, to always be mm -hmm. changing something. So Now, another thing I want to mention, you're also on Facebook. We are on Facebook. Yep, you can like our page, um, The Eerie Zoo. Which I do. Yeah, we have lots of updates. We have a thing called Takeover Tuesday, where I follow around a zookeeper all day, and we post pictures and talk about what that zookeeper does during the day. So actually, if you don't get a chance to get down here, you can keep up with what's going on by yes. on their Facebook page. And we also post all of our classes there. And you you know, our classes aren't just for little kids. They're for all different age groups. Such so as, come on, give me a class for know, different age groups. We have um, behind the scenes tours where you can um, get to know about the rhinos. And these are for older adults. So you learn everything about a rhino and then you go up to the rhino exhibit and you can get to go behind the scenes and pet the rhinos and get to meet them. Um, you know, it goes a little bit more in depth than what a kid's class would go. Okay, so yeah. now with the one I'm done, I could say I know everything there is to know about yes. a rhino. Yes, you could. Ha. There you go. I'm going to tell you something. Now, they can keep up with any of these classes, see what's available um, on your website. Yes. How do we get to your website? EerieZoo.org. Facebook. Facebook. And they can even stop down or call. Yep, right? and our newsletter. Oh, that's right, the newsletter. So lots of ways to keep in touch here. Okay. Emily, I want to thank you so much for taking the time yeah. and uh, letting us follow you around here. Of course. And explaining some of the exhibits. Yes. So I really appreciate no it. No problem. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Doesn't matter your age, infant to senior, the Erie Zoo has something for everyone. Come down and discover for yourself what keeps over 400,000 annual visitors coming back. Thank you for joining us today as our tour through the zoo. And again, thank you for tuning into the Milker Government Channel. Till next time, have a wonderful day. Come and visit the zoo. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.